Hello, and welcome to this edition of EV5 Investment Report. I'm your host, Amy Rios. Today we are joined by Jeff Comachero, President and CEO of the RANCON EB5 Regional Center and RANCON Group and former mayor of the city of Temecula. Jeff oversees the general operations of RANCON's development, entitlement, and marketing teams. He is actively involved in the design and planning of strategic infrastructure for RANCON's master plan communities. Welcome, Jeff. Can you explain um, what RANCON's involvement in EB-5 is and why you decided to start a regional center? Certainly. We, uh, we really weren't intent on forming a regional center for its own business purpose, but we're in the process of building a, a world-class winery, hotel, and spa complex. And once we got it all designed and approved, we realized the economy wasn't really going to allow us the financing that we had hoped for. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that after some research that an EB-5 equity raise or loan could be much more effective for us. And so after looking at what was out there, we decided that, well, rather than just going to somebody else's regional center, it made a lot of sense for us to form our own and utilize our own winery project as the first project for the center. So can you explain this winery project? This is your first EB-5 offering. Do you have investors? Um, where are we at in, as far as development of the winery? The project itself, uh, as it's built out, will be approximately an $80 million project. We started by raising $14 million privately, and we have 84 investors that represent that $14 million. And so as we go forward, we would take that money, the $14 million, mm -hmm. use it for all of the uh, original plans, the architecture, everything else that you need to get through all the approvals. And then once that happened, we would go out and get a construction loan. And so uh, without the ability to do that because of the economy, I would hope that as the economy strengthens a little bit, that will change. But, uh, but today, the, uh, I don't say the only option. We have a few other options. We could raise additional equity, but it's much better for us to go out and, uh, and look to raise it as debt uh, and build the facility. Do you know how many, approximately how many jobs will be created from this EB-5 project? Uh, 1,155. Oh, wow. That's a lot of jobs. Yeah. Do you know what economist you used and what kind of uh, job creation model was used, RIMS, Implan? You know, I, I know we looked at both models, so I, I, you'll have to ask him. It's Dr. Michael Evans uh, from Florida who did the economic study for us. So are, are there any open investor slots with, the, with this project right now? Are you fully subscribed? Uh, Non-EB-5? Mm -hmm. Actually, there are. Uh, we uh, went out for a $14 million raise. We raised uh, $12.2 million, and then we stopped mm -hmm. because, uh, frankly, we didn't have a need until we built the full facilities. But we'd like to fill those now. It actually will help us fill a, a time gap Whereas we can fill that, raise the additional money, go out and start completing our infrastructure plans, which would shave 12 to 18 months off the process. When do you expect to, this project to be complete? We're four to five years if everything goes well. We're looking at 18 months on the outside to complete the infrastructure plans, uh, another 18 months to build it. So three years from the date we get the full um, uh, debt raise in the bank, we can go out and build it, and we're estimating about a year to complete that raise. Do you know what your second EB-5 offering will be? Any talk about that? Uh, we have talked about that. Um, it's not finalized, so I, I shouldn't really talk too much about it, but it will more than likely be a second winery project um, for another builder, not, not ourselves. Now, is the city of Temecula supportive in your efforts as the EB-5 regional center? Uh, yes, the city is. Uh, the city is supportive of anything that, that's going to bring a, a level of economic development to the region. Our project specifically is not within the city of Temecula, although it carries a Temecula address. It's actually just across the, the uh, county line in the unincorporated part of Riverside County. Uh, while the city doesn't get directly involved in facilitating EB-5 investment, certainly is supportive of seeing it happen. Do you know if the city hosts delegations from China to help possibly bring in Chinese investors to introduce them to your regional center, possibly to, to invest in the, any, any projects? Really have not uh, to date. And of course, for, for me personally, because I serve uh, in another capacity at the city of Temecula when I'm not uh, here at the Rankine Group, uh, it's not something that, that I would push that would be inappropriate. 
the city could certainly do that uh, on its own for EB5 in general, not necessarily for, for our project. Was the city uh, helpful in, in at all in, in helping you establish this regional center? Uh, it wouldn't have been appropriate for me to okay. ask. <laughs> okay, okay. And so I didn't. Do you know about American Redevelopment Solutions? Are you familiar with Ron Darling and, and their efforts and their projects? Uh, I am to some degree. Uh, not terribly familiar. I know who Ron Darling is, actually. Uh, our, the founder of our company, Dan Stevenson, and I have talked a time or two on the phone with him, uh, asking him a few questions, getting a few pointers. Okay, so he's has he kind of been like a mentor to you for establishing a regional center? Uh, a, a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say we've asked him to mentor us, although we would welcome that. But uh, we did ask him a few questions that he did respond to for us. Now, going back to the Truax project, um, what is your, or do you have any involvement with that uh, as a city? Uh, the city had no involvement in the EB-5 side of it. The city okay. certainly had involvement in uh, helping him secure the entitlements, uh, approving the project, and, and the like. Okay. Now, do you know Tom Barnett or Buck Johns, or do you have any relationship with Inland Investor Group 8? Uh, I don't. I, I don't know Tom Barnett. I have met with uh, with Buck Johns. Actually, we met here in uh, in our offices uh, probably a year, a year and a half ago, when we were looking at the possibility of working through an existing regional center rather than starting our own. Where do cities? What role do they play in helping support EB five centers and the EB five program? You have an awful lot of representatives to the National League of Cities who come from seventeen thousand cities and towns across America, and they're all looking for the same thing, especially in in difficult economic times, and that's economic development. And so anything that further, furthers that cause for them is something that they're going to be supportive of. So while they may not get involved directly in the financing of a project through EB-5, they certainly wouldn't stand in the way and want to encourage projects to be financed through any appropriate means that they could. Can you tell me when does RANCON release the EB-5 investor funds to their projects? Is it on signing or is it upon approval of the I-526? We do escrow the funds. We haven't gotten there yet, but uh -huh. uh, in our business plan uh, and in all of our documents, the partnership agreements and the PPM, uh, is to escrow the funds until such time as the 924 is submitted. So currently, RANCON is not designated yet as a USCIS regional center, doesn't have the designation. Um, when can we expect the designation to go through? Boy, I wish I had the answer to that. <laughs> we, uh, we submitted our completed application, and it was deemed complete at mm -hmm. USCIS on uh, the beginning of October of 2012. And we were told at the time to expect about an eight-month process. Uh, we all know that uh, the wheels move slowly in Washington, and so um, we would be very happy with that eight-month completion, although we realize it may run longer than that. The new guidelines that USCIS just um, put out, I think it was November, the guidance memorandum, does that affect you as a regional center? Are you talking about does it pertain to tenancy? Yes, the tenant occupancy issue. Uh, it, it potentially will affect us in the long run as we look to finance other projects other than our own. It will be an issue, and, it, and it's uh, certainly a limiting factor mm -hmm. in those projects that can be financed. It doesn't affect our winery project any since we will own and operate it. What are some of the issues and challenges and, and problems that you face as a regional center? What's been the biggest obstacle that you've encountered? There, there are several. Uh, the biggest obstacle for us on the short term really has been time. And uh, we're used to doing things, uh, you know, we, we make a decision, we move forward, post haste, and get it done. And when you're dealing with uh, the federal government and the red tape that, that's involved there, uh, that's frustrating and difficult because obviously, t you know, time becomes money. Uh, but the real issue, I think, is uncertainty in the process. Uh, that, that's a killer for the business community. And so as we see new guidance coming out, new regulation that comes out, uh, you may be down the road in a particular Pro, uh, project and then find out the rules have changed before you get a chance to consummate it, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. The other thing that, that I look at being kind of uh, more, in, not more interested, but equally interested on the political side is the, the jobs cap, the 10,000 uh, jobs per, uh, per year. Uh, as the EB-5 program becomes more and more popular and is used more and more, it's pretty obvious that we're going to run up against that cap, and, yeah. and I would think that's part of the reason for the latest guidance on tenancy, mm -hmm. is to keep that level down. So uh, at some point, are we going to run into political difficulties? Is it going to become 
geopolitically um, difficult for, uh, for Congress to continue reauthorizing the program. Uh, there's are always some talk about uh, particularly China and mm -hmm. how much uh, they own of the United States, and this is a means to own a little bit more. Um, so it will always be an issue, and we always have to deal with, with those things with an eye towards what's going to happen a year and two and three from now, what's going to be my contingency plan. Now, as far as your investors, are they mostly from China, or where, are, where is your investor pool coming from? We're, we're seeking that investor pool in China uh, exclusively at this point. We are looking at a few other options, but I, I would imagine that it'll be 100% from China. That's the plan. Thank you so much for your time today, Jeff. It's my pleasure. Since 1971, Rancon Group has been involved in real estate property transactions, investments, and development in one of the nation's prime development areas. Rancon has established a track record for sustainable futures in the real estate market with a network of real estate-related companies and divisions formed to provide an array of services for buyers, sellers, developers, investors, and owners of real estate property. I'm Amy Rios and I want to thank you for watching this edition of EV5 Investment Report.